everyone, I'm Sostine and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make a cottagecore everyday dress inspired by the 1840s. First off, I'd like to mention that like many, I'm someone who has fallen in love with the aesthetic of cottagecore. Between the use of natural fibers, a historically inspired aesthetic, the flowing look, as well as the call to nature itself, much like my other obsession, Art Nouveau, cottagecore has been a huge part of my wardrobe and my aesthetic since the early days of the pandemic. This mostly resulted in me wearing long flowing dresses or pinafore dresses with aprons based on the 1860s or other historical eras. While I made most of my wardrobe between the three moves that I did in the past 15 months, I haven't really had a chance to make all that many everyday dresses, but I really want to change that and get back into making pieces for my everyday life. In this case, I wanted to mix up cottagecore with the 1840s, an era that I think is very much underappreciated, but more as a daily wear dress versus a historically accurate one. So this will be worn without a corset, just a heads up. Now, why the 1840s? Between the full but not overly full skirts, and by the way, the wired hoop skirts that are really famous weren't really patented until 1856 in Paris, and this is decidedly before then. And also the other reason I love the 1840s is because this is the first natural waist we've really seen in about 50 years. Honestly though, it really is just the combination of a full skirt and a natural waist since I think it makes for such a lovely silhouette. Oh, so pretty. The 1840s was really my jam. I didn't really do it for some reason till now, but today uh, that's what we're gonna do. Now, um, just a heads up, it is very hard to find patterns for this era. So what I actually ended up doing was begging a friend of mine for a pattern, which brings me to first off, send a giant thank you to Alex of Burlesque Brigade, an incredibly skilled and talented and actual professional costume maker in New York City for selling me the pattern for this dress. She used an 1840s dress design for her 1840s Sophie for a Howl's Moving Castle cosplay, which I think is actually like my favorite Sophie I've seen yet. Like, look at how perfect she is. This is just one of many, many beautiful things that she's made. As for the skirt, 1840s skirts are just rectangles cartridge pleated into a narrow waist, so I didn't really need a pattern for there. So the bodice is really all I needed. Uh, so thank you so much, Burlesque Brigade. Uh, for those of you who want to make this dress but don't have of Alex's pattern. Um, I have also linked a couple of others down below. Feel free to look at them and see if there's one that will fit you well. But material wise, I want to make this in linen. Linen, unlike cotton, gets stronger when it's wet, so it survived machine washing beautifully. Seriously, my last linen dress that I made has gone through the wash now about 80 times, and I think about 85 is when it started to wear down. So for mine, I went to fabricstore.com and bought up eight yards of gorgeous medium weight linen. I actually only ended up using about six yards of it, but nonetheless, I had extra. Now with a plan, materials, and pattern, let's get started. So first off, I opened up the pattern that Burlesque Brigade sent me, and honestly, this was like the most delightful pattern I've ever used. She actually traced it onto such thick paper, and I loved how she actually cut out tabs for the registration marks for easy matching. I traced it onto cotton muslin and made a mock-up. I did have to add seam allowances. For me, I actually use about 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance for most parts. I did use half an inch for certain areas, but I'll go into that when I do. It honestly fit perfectly other than needing to be lengthened on the waist. I then cut out the linen for the outside shell. Now 
for the lining, I wanted it to be nice and strong so that it would put up with multiple washes, but also give the body some structure. So instead of linen, I use a cotton twill of mine. Now, normally I just flatline it, but in this case, I would be wearing the dress without anything under it directly next to my skin. So uh, flatlining would result in some free edges that would rub against me and possibly chafe. So in this case, I decided to go with the double shell method. This is not a problem when you wear a gown. There is chafing is not a problem because you're wearing a corset and a corset cover and a chemise and all of your other under things. But in this case, I'm just going to be wearing a bra with it. So in my case, I sewed the bodice together, the bodice back to the bodice sides, to the sides to the other sides and the sides to the front. Now I did this twice for the lining as well as the outside. I then made the sleeve. I do love me a bishop sleeve. For the sleeves, I sewed up, I sewed this up and I used a zigzag stitch to finish the raw edges on the inside so that it wouldn't unravel. As per Alex's pattern, I cut a slit in the sleeve where I wanted it to open and hemmed that by hand about one eighth of an inch. I used cotton twill to line the cuff to give it more strength. Then I sewed the cuff together in three of the right sides. Then I turned it right side out and I gathered up the sleeve edge and pinned it to the edges of the cuff, right sides together. I sewed this together with my machine, a Baby Lock Soprano, and then I folded it over my edges, entrapping the raw edge of the sleeve into the cuff. I then sewed it down by hand. The buttons and the closures I'll do later. Once I finished the two sleeves, I then sewed it onto the bodice. I did this by, by sewing it onto the armhole, only to the linen outside shell. and I put them together wrong side together, right sides out, and pinned it. This next step might seem a little unnecessary, but this is what I just did since I really wanted the two layers to really move as one. So I did a space back stitch in the seams of the back and sides so that the two layers would actually be really stuck together. I made sure to stitch in the seam itself down to into the lining so that none of the stitches would show. Once that part of the bodice was sewn together, I then folded over the cotton twill inside and hand stitched the lining over the raw edges of the sleeve. This would give the sleeve hole more strength and also keep the raw edges from bothering me. I then figured out exactly where I wanted the front bodice to go. I always give myself around three inches seam allowance in the front, especially when I'm gonna button or hook and eye it so that there's a little bit of room to like wiggle around. I can always cut off excess fabric. It is much easier to do that than add it over later. So once I figured out the center front, I folded over the front edges and sewed in a channel for the boning in the front. Please note that I did put in about a one inch overlap for the hooks and eyes. I did add a piece of synthetic whalebone to the very front, one on each end to give the front a little bit more of a firm edge so that the hooks and eyes wouldn't have pulling marks. I sewed in the hooks onto the right side only to the lining. This part was very strong at this point by the way. I then gathered up the front bottom four rows on the linen shell and then sewed it onto the bodice. I don't really know what I was thinking. I really think I was just like going by road. I was just very tired and I kept on sewing for fun and I realized oh my god I gathered it completely wrong. I gathered it more like a chemise a la reine like the one I'm wearing where you have gathers all the way to the front instead of just in the center which is really how an 1840s gown should go. So once I figured that out I actually tore out my stitches and regathered it pushing the gathers to the very center of the front and then sewed it there again and I sewed those gathers onto the straw cotton to a lining and there you go. That arrow took me about two hours but it was completely worth it. I then added the eyes to the hooks all the way down. I also made up 16 hand covered linen buttons 
and then added those on as well. The ones at the front do not close. They're not actually functional, but I did sew some totally historically inaccurate snaps to make sure that the buttons don't just fall open in the front. I added on buttons to the cuff, three for each cuff, and used some small black elastic as closure. I actually love doing elastic in this way. This way I don't have to unbutton each button every single time I put it on. I can literally just pull it and the elastic has enough give to let my hand go through without having to rebutton it. Now the bodice was done. Time for the skirt. Now, if I can give you one piece of advice for my other cottage core gowns, cartridge pleated skirts look amazing. However, they do not hold up in the long run in the machine wash. The problem is you have about 100 to 140 inches of skirt fabric all completely heavy, like pulling at the bodice bottom and it tears the fabric, it tears the thread. So this time I decided to reproduce the look while reducing the weight by making a full circle skirt, but making the center much bigger, about two times bigger, so that now I still have extra room to gather it to the waist. So you have the gathered look at the top, but it's a full circle skirt, so you have the fullness and it's lighter and easier for washing, and I have tested it, it does work. And that's what I did. I cut out a skirt, making a larger hole with a diameter of twice my actual natural waist, and then gathered it up the fabric in two rows of strong cotton thread, and sewed it onto the waistband. For the waistband, I like a 1.5 inch waistband, I just find it very comfortable. So I cut a piece of fabric, four inches wide, a uh, half an inch seam allowance on each side, so one inch extra free seam allowance and three inches for the two. I sewed the waistband linen onto some cotton muslin. It's very thin, but it gives enough support. And then sewed it on with a half inch seam allowance on one side. I folded over the waistband and then machine sewed it closed. This part will not be seen because it will be covered up by the bodice. So I didn't really care about it being perfect. I then tried on the skirt. It was a little long. Um, I think it was, I think in this I was thinking floor length, but now once I actually did it, I really wanted to be a little bit above the ankles and then hemmed it by machine. Finally, I sewed in hooks and bars to the bottom of the bodice and the waistband of the skirt so that the two could stay together. And the look was done. It is so incredibly easy to put on. I put on the skirt first, then I put on the bodice, and then just close it with hooks and bars. And overall, it's incredibly comfortable. I wore it on several outings already with the family. I really love. This makes me just want to do more 1840s. I did wear it with a petticoat. My petticoat is from Gibson Girl Dress. They have very reasonably priced petticoats, so I would check them out. I know I've been doing a lot of 18th century, so it was really fun doing a completely new era, and I really enjoyed this project. Altogether, I'd say it took me about 20 to 30 hours to make this dress. Next, I want to make the Sakazo strawberry dress, but as an 1848 to 1854 creation, um, much inspired by the Kyoto Museum examples that they have. I am also working on a celestial dress that I'm making for one of my best friends, Astrea, better known online as the Queen Astrea on TikTok. You may not know this, but the Queen has a full-fledged degree in design and it has been so much fun collaborating with her in making the best possible worth gown that we can come up with for the era. So please don't forget to subscribe so you can see this as well as my other projects. I make tons of crazy things on this channel and I'd love to have you join up. The Astrea worth gown will be the next two videos and I'm really excited. Now settled up in Chicago, so I have a little bit more time to sew, so I'm hoping I can get all of these done. Thanks again for watching. Hi, Knightley. What are you up to? You look uncomfortable.